Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. For today's training, what we're going to do is we are going to track down a mystery water leak. We're in my garage and at the ceiling of the garage, I'll show you on a zoom in, right there, I see a new water leak that has developed. Now, I know that we are directly that this area is uh, directly below a the second floor restroom so the water leak is coming from the second floor restroom I also know that this is not from uh, a, a cold or hot water supply line because it only comes it's only uh, pre um, present uh, or active I should say when the um, uh, the it's either from the two sinks or the toilet or the shower. I'm not sure which one yet. I'm going to suspect that it's from the toilet, but I'll see if I can confirm that uh, by doing some testing. Okay, so how you determine that uh, this is active or past a uh, water leak, or the way that I'm determining it, is with uh, this uh, moisture meter. But you can just use your hand, but with this it gives you an actual number. Uh, let me show you how this uh, works and, and give you a close up. So here is my moisture meter and it is a general and you can see the model number there. I got it at the Home Depot for like $45. Turn it on by pushing this button right here and you can see that the mode that it's on right now is wood. If you use the mode button you can go from wall, I'm sorry, so it starts out on wall, then it goes to masonry, push it again, it goes to softwood, then it goes to hardwood. We're dealing with a wall. In this case, it's a ceiling, but we're going to treat it as if it's the same thing as a wall. And, all, and this is what you call non-invasive. This has no pins. This has a, um, a, a, a sensing pad here, like, right, let me show you. It's picking up my, the moisture in my finger. It's showing 100%. The uh, LED is going out and it's giving you an audible beeping sound saying, hey, there's something wrong here. You got too much moisture. So it's reading 100% moisture content from the moisture in my finger. Now, looking at the ceiling, if we come over to here where it's dry, there's 0%. As I move this closer to the water stain and go right on top of it, it's giving you, I don't know, let's see here, about 83% and it's going into the red on the lights and it's telling you, hey, you got something going on right there. All right, so actually let's do this. Let's get this highest number right in the center of that. It's showing, oh, let's see here, I had it higher. Let's just say 78%. I'm going to go upstairs and flush the toilet a few times and see if that number increases to 100%. Okay, here's the second floor restroom. So we got the toilet. We're going to look around there. There's the shower. So it could be a shower drain. It could be the uh, toilet drain. Or we have two sinks up here. And it could be associated with the sink drain. So let's look underneath just for the hell of it just to see if anything's going on here and in this particular case everything is dry underneath p traps are dry and everything i don't want to run the sinks yet i want to run one fixture at a time to try to figure out which fixture it is but i'm just looking for active water leaks just for the hell of it now here's the second sink and this is interesting. So what happened was, is I was the one that it installed. By the way, I did a, this full bathroom remodel. If you want to see how I did this, you can check out my channel. I installed all the shower and the wall, the floor, the toilet, everything I put in. And I have this on my channel, Ken Training. You can search that under a bathroom remodel and see how I put the, the niches in. I put two, two on that side and one on that, this side over here. Okay, now coming back to this project. So anyways, I put this vanity in and I also did all the plumbing 
And and I had this uh, plastic tray, and whenever I have like an extra plastic tray, I just stick them underneath the P-trap. If there's ever a leak, uh, why not have it leak in the plastic rather than on your vanity? Um, but in this particular case, it's dry as a bone, so, so nothing there, okay? Now, let's check over here at the toilet. Let's see if there's anything going on over here. I'm just going to feel with my hand. Everything's dry as a bone. Check on the other side. And everything looks dry as a bone. I also got my moisture meter here. And it's uh, set to wall, but there's not really a good... If this is not masonry, uh, this is not soft wood and this is not hardwood, so wall is probably the best one. Let's see if it picks up any moisture here. Oh, it's getting actually 10%. Let's see if anything comes over. Yeah. Nothing. Let's see if it does anything over here. Actually, so it's just the floor itself way over here. It's picking up 5%. But it was getting a little bit higher number here. Let's see. Double check that. I guess not. Five, seven percent. Seven percent there in the back. All right. So let's go ahead and flush this Glacier Bay toilet. See if that number increases or changes downstairs uh, to, a, to to what we got. All right. So it's got one of these dual flush things. Uh, one and two. Let's see if I can give you a close up of that. Uh, anyways, I use the uh, stronger one, so it gets a, a bigger flush. And I'm just going to do this a couple of times to try to get this drain line as active as possible. And if there's a leak in this drainage system, I want to uh, see if this number uh, goes up from above 80. See if we can get it to 100%. That would tell me this is it's associated with the toilet. So I'm trying to troubleshoot and identify where, where, the, where the leak is coming from. Okay, I flushed the toilet three times. The reading is right about the same. And I don't think it's the toilet. What I'm going to do is go operate the tub. All right, let's go turn this on. I'm going to let that run for a few minutes. Just put it on cold. No reason to waste hot water. You know what? I think that's this water leak is increasing. I think I can see it leaking in front of me. Let's turn, let's uh, see if this changes. I don't know, maybe it's just me. No, I swear that thing is that's getting bigger. Look at that. Now I'm up to 92%. It's the tub. The tub is my issue. It's not the toilet. I'm convinced of it. I can see even if I didn't have the water meter, I can actually see the water. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's the tub. I think I'm pretty. I'm, I'm very confident that the pro my issue is going to be the tub. Numerically, I can even see it. Look at this. We were not at that number before. Before, look at that. We're at 100%. It's definitely the tub. Did you see that? It's the tub for sure. Oh yeah. We. I think it was 82, 80, 83 was the highest before. Now we're at 95. Depending upon where you put it, it even jumps up even higher. 93. Uh, we have confirmation the problem is the tub. Let me go shut that off. Alright, let me go ahead and shut this off. Okay, what we want to do is we want to get in back of the tub to see the, um, the drain, the P-trap underneath the, the uh, tub. And there's an overflow there and, and this whole section right there. Ideally what you should have in back of the tub is an excess panel. Here's the problem. See the tub? Come over here. 
and you can see that we've got an exterior wall right there and directly in back of this space is a storage room that's from the garage so what I'm gonna have to do is go down there and there's no access panel there and I'm gonna probably have to create one so uh, it's gonna take a little time plus I got a bunch of storage in, in the uh, in the attic and this is all the way in the back I'm gonna have to remove that in order to gain access entry to this area um, yeah, that's probably going to be my best bet. Unless I could go underneath and see if I could actually see the leak from where it's actually leaking. Uh, maybe I'll do that because I have a drywall repair there anyways. This is my common area bathroom on the first level. Here is a bathtub, okay? And directly behind the bathtub, you have an access panel. Now, there is a toilet right here, and to really gain entry access, I should say, into that area, the toilet would have to be removed. But the toilet can be removed. It would not be, it, it, you know, because this particular toilet, and I installed this toilet as well, I put sealant all the way around the uh, base of this uh, toilet, so I'd have to cut all that out, remove it, in, uh, in order to have full access to that access panel. But this is the uh, panel that I'm looking for on the tub that we're working on for the, on the second level. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. What I'll do first is I'll open this up and look up there with the flashlight just to see if I can see anything and determine what's le what the, if, if I can actually see the leak. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay, I got my flashlight here. Really nice flashlight. And let's go up here and see what we see. Oh, look at that. That is right there, directly underneath the tub. Uh, let's see if I can get you the best picture of this. Hold on. debris falling everywhere here but it looks like it's that gasket uh, directly uh, where the tub uh, meets at the bottom let me uh, let me look around here okay I am running the bathtub with water and if I could show this to you on the camera. Come on. Hang on just a little tight. See right there? It's definitely the gasket. The problem is the gasket. See? See right? I'm going to put my finger right on it. Right there at the top. You see how I've got water coming right from where the, from where the, uh, the bottom of the bathtub is to the drain? That gasket is my issue. So, uh, I'm going to go upstairs and uh, uh, work on that right now and show you what I'm going to do. And then we'll uh, test everything out. Okay, so here's the drain. We know this is the part that's leaking. I'm going to take this uh, cross T for drains and stick it in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to see how uh, tight this is. Maybe this is just loose. So you see it's got uh, holes right here so I just take a screwdriver, stick it in here, put the cross T in, and then I'm going to try to tighten that up to see how loose this is before I do anything. 
and it's definitely moving and I'm definitely tightening that up. I got a bigger screwdriver here. Let me just get a little bit more leverage on it. Maybe it was just loose. If we have to, we'll take it all apart, but I'm going to do a test first like this. Okay. All right, that's as tight as I want to go. That's as tight as I feel comfortable with, which is pretty tight, by the way. We're going to put some water in here. We're going to test it out. Okay, hopefully you can hear that. That's the water draining. It uh, is not leaking. All I needed to do was be tightened up. I didn't realize that uh, I didn't do it tight enough. So, anyways, that's, uh, that's that leak solved. Now we need to figure out what we want to do with this hole here. I could repatch it with drywall, but because this is right underneath the tub and there's, a, and there's a copper lines here for water and stuff like that, I kind of like having this uh, be an access opening rather than a patched up drywall thing so I can look up there at any time so I can see right there is a is a joist and I got to figure out where my spacing is on the other side oh, it's pretty close it's just right there let me measure that out to see what that distance is okay so my joists are going here and one here there's 16 and a half inches on center and they're spaced a little bit farther apart than that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get a 8 inch by 8 inch access panel to put right where that hole is at. So let me go see if I can purchase one. Okay, so my local Home Depot has a uh, 8 inch by 8 inch uh, access panel. There it is right there with a little pictorial example. And it's got it in stock and it's only $13. So... Um, I don't see that this this will be fine. If you wanted to purchase the same one, there's the internet number, model number, store SKU number. But uh, I'm gonna go down, go ahead and go down and pick one up. All right, so I went to the Home Depot and I purchased this eight by eight access panel with an adjustable spring-loaded uh, type of a tension thing here on the back. And it was um, fifteen dollars out the door. Now, now I'm making a change. We are located in the garage. I am creating an access hole where there was not an access hole in the past. And we are located in the in the garage where you keep cars and automobiles and gasoline and lawn mowers and stuff like that. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking my cold code compliant uh, complete book second edition and I come over there's uh, four sections here okay so we have to determine whether this is building plumbing mechanical or electrical and this is a building related uh, thing that I'm changing so I've already looked it up in here under building and I go to garages the code is saying you need a minimum of one half inch gypsum board, which is basically sheetrock, or equivalent on the garage side of the walls and ceilings, common to the house or shared attic space with the exception of F3. And this is under the International Reg Residential Code, code section T302-6. F3 would be uh, figure 3, and figure 3 is located right here oops figure three is right here fire separation from the garage and it uh, goes into um, a little bit here um, of what's going on with uh, with that and then if habitable space over the garage is a ceiling must be 5 8 inch and it must be type X so we're working on the uh, ceiling now, are we above a, a habitable space? 
I can't remember the definition of a habitable space. I think a habitable space, uh, I would assume that and uh, it's not a habitable room, it's just a habitable space. So I would assume any any normal space such as a bathroom, which is what we're working directly below, is a habitable space. So the code is saying what it wants is 5 8 inch uh, drywall type X because it's a fire resistant. So me putting in an access panel is actually going against the code. But because this is directly beneath the bathroom and it has full access to the P-trap and plus the uh, bottom of the uh, of the tub and stuff like that, I really want an access panel here. So I I'm going to put it in and 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 break the uh, the code knowingly uh, that I'm doing something that the code doesn't want me to do. The reason why they created the code was basically for safety and for construction standards. This is not a construction uh, standard, it's really just for safety. Uh, what the code is concerned about is if there's a fire in the garage that it's going to travel into the dwelling and into a habitable space and if you don't have that layer of protection that they're code is is trying to put you in compliance with 5 8 inch type x drywall the fire will spread faster now i do have um type excuse me i do have uh smoke detectors throughout the house and in every sleeping room and in the common areas so i do have a lot of protection like that and i want this access so i'm going to go ahead and put the access panel in um, because I want to be able to perform inspections and repairs up here at, without doing drywall repairs um, each time. So I want that convenience. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and do the installation. If you are going to do this type of an installation, you need to make that determination if you are willing to take the, that risk involved or just put up uh, 5 8 inch type X drywall. Now when this house was constructed, I don't think they had 5 8 inch type X drywall. As a matter of fact, I got the drywall that I took out right here. Here's the drywall that uh, came out of the uh, project. I got a tape measure right here. Let's measure it out. Maybe it is 5 8 cents type X. I, I don't know what year they started that uh, that in, but uh, let me try and do it like this so you can see it. Holy cow, that is 5 8 yeah yeah that actually is 5 8 so that might be type X uh, drywall but it is 5 8 drywall I'll tell you that much uh, but either way I want to go put up the access panel right now Okay, that is going to conclude this video. Uh, if you like the video, please click on like, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, to check out my other DIY type videos, and I'll see you later. I'll catch you on the flip side.